Welcome back. Jabustone is a well-known figure in hair care circles in Joburg. He started hair salons and styling decades ago. His trademark Rastafarian look, he might disagree with me, but he'll tell us more, was popularized by personalities like Yvonne Chaka Chaka, Lawrence Dube, and Jerry Ransady. He has moved into product manufacturing now and has also written a book called From Passion to Profit. He joins us to tell us more about the hair care industry and where he is in his business. Jabu, pleasure to catch up with yeah, you. Thanks for having me. I'm right to say decades ago. Yeah, yeah. decades, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the like, 90s. What, it's the 90s, it's yeah. almost 30 Early 90s, years now. Yeah. Can you believe it? Yeah, time, time flies. flies yeah. And you also defined the hair care industry with yeah. that particular look that I mentioned. Yes. Now tell me, how did you get involved in, uh, in the hair care industry? For some reason, I've never been to your shop to do anything, but I know all <laughs> the people that have been there and uh, wore the, the styling that yeah. you were yeah. known for. Yeah. yeah. I think the reason was that, that those chemicals in the past, because my sister had a salon. Yeah. So I was a little bit uncomfortable in terms of the when they, after relaxing the hair, they go to the basins, after some time the scalp is damaged, they've mm. got sores, you know, all this. So I got a little bit concerned on that. And then that's when I realized that by then, when I started in the 90s, people were more into Eurocentric beauty standard. Mm. You know, for you to be acceptable, you know, your hair must be straight, your mm. skin must be light. But I realized that you can't suffer for beauty. Then I introduced, I started introducing the natural, you know, stars, your lock market, of which I always um, like to call it hair locks, not dreadlocks, because yeah. people, people know that, yeah. yeah. So I started introducing the hair lock market, but it was not the right time by then, because people were anti, because then it was associated with all the wrong things, the Rastafari and the ganja smoking, you know. But uh, as I started, like, approaching the people, there were those who listened to me, those who understand, like, your Lawrence Dube, your Shadow Twalas, your Sipo Hostics, you know, all those guys mm. listened when I started introducing that, about mm. Yvonne Chaka Chaka. So, but to me, when I had such people, it was more of celebrity endorsement. Because when they believed in what I was telling them, and it was easier to take the message out there to their followers. Yeah. But, but now, the, the, the concern that you had then had to do with the product more than anything else, yeah. right? And what you call hair lock, uh, hair was locks, it not yeah. product dependent? I mean, tell me a bit more about the development of that the, hairstyle. The, the, that hairstyle, people, they use all the wrong products like your... Uh, fizzy drinks, your you know face soap, you know all those things. But I realized that it was not those products were not meant for that. And then what I did, I approached a chemist. And then I told him that I need a product that can maintain this hairstyle. Mm. So when you twist towards a certain direction, it can hold. So the chemist started making notes. Okay, that's a holding power. Mm. And I needed the product that after you apply it it can protect against the ultraviolet rays of the sun. Okay. So it doesn't change the color because there are those guys, the hair, well, like you find turning brown, mm. because our scalp produces natural oils, but the ones you use the harsh shampoos, you strip those oils away. Okay. Now it's no more protected. So that is where now we said, let's get something that can add moisture on the scalp. So we developed a product that will maintain the natural, without changing the movement of your Afrocentric curl. So we enhance that look. You know, then that's when we started uh, uh, developing that product to move away from people thinking that you can just grow hair and, and use anything, but, but, but the hair needs to be protected. And how was business then? I mean, did people, it was, a, I, I suppose, a struggle of sorts. It initially. was tough because yeah. people didn't believe in what I was preaching because they said, why should I look like a Rastafarian? He looks untidy. He look mm. So, but you know, that's, I had to get that celebrity endorsement, you know, get people who are known and then make sure that that hairstyle looks beautiful, and then the followers, when they see them, they... But did that, did that turn the market? Did it, it turned the market yeah. slowly. It was a difficult one, because I remember the bank's uh, funders didn't even want to look at me, because they said, how many clients, how many products are you going to sell? How many people want the product? It was tough. And uh, as well, the salons, because every hair product, you need a salon to endorse it, you know, to amplify that usage. The salons didn't want to use the product themselves, because they realized that the hairstyle would take longer than the normal hairstyles they do to make more money on themselves. It was tough. So, but uh, in, in time, when did you turn things around? Because there was a time when yeah. you owned several salons. Yes, yes. I, I started them. renting a chair at Alex Hair Salon. Yeah. I rented a chair from him, and uh, whereby I realized that I must have some. Ale Alex, the Alex, hairdresser. The right? hairdresser, yeah. And when you say a chair, you mean one chair? One with, chair. Yeah, one starting chair. with just one. One chair. Yeah. That makes sure that whoever wants to have this hairstyle, the, the chair is there. Yeah. Because I would go to a salon and give a demonstration. 
and the, she will agree more to say, okay, chabu, I will. But when I send clients there, I said, you know what? You look nice with the SKL yeah, or relaxer. Don't need, don't, you don't need this. Yeah. Then I realized that by doing that, she's making peace for herself. But for me, it's destroying yeah. my product. Yeah. Yeah. Hence, I, I, I started with that chair at LXL. Yeah. Then from that chair, when I realized people, there's a guy who traveled by train from Cape Town to Park Station into the Southern DDC and then back to the train, back to Cape Town. Then I realized that, wow, now it shows it's me that catching it, it's now. catching on. Yeah. Others would fly and say, Jabu, I'm leaving now, Deben, I'm flying to Dumai and then I'm coming back. That's when I realized now it is kind of, there is a demand, people, they realize that they need that. Then that's when I opened now salons. I said, let me get closer. You know, I had a salon in Pretoria, Sunnyside, Deben, you know, Mpangeni, Bloemfontein, Cape Town, East London. So I started opening up to Botswana. Okay. Mm. But then, along the way, you decided that you should leave <coughs> the operations and rather go back to manufacturing and leave uh, hairstyling. What happened? What led you my, to My core business was product manufacturing from the beginning. Yeah. But getting into salons was to amplify the usage of the product. But when I saw my staff starting to open their own businesses, you know, having two, three salons, and I said, okay, let me move back and, and supply them with the product. Mm. But unfortunately, as I like sit now today, there's none of them having that. They're renting chairs now. Yeah, okay. They closed down. All so right. now, the idea I need to come back because when I do my activations, the people come back and said, Mr. Stone, why can't you open a saloon yeah. here in Pretoria? Because we still need these services. But I look around, those people, they close long time. Let, let's talk about the hair care industry from your experience and point of view because it's a very popular business. Right. And there are new things that are happening there, the weaves and the waves and the yeah. products, and uh, a whole number. What, what do you see? What's going on in the hair care industry currently? I think there's a shift. You know, remember I said it was more Eurocentric yeah. before. People were like, you're straightening, you're everything. Now there's a shift. People want to look natural because the chemicals, you know, people have seen different things that have done to their hair and the scalp. So people are moving towards your natural, your afro, your locks. But even those now, the weaves as well. To find most of those who are having weaves, it's either the hair is badly damaged, you know, mm. they, 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 you know the hairline is gone then they is going to wear that weave or the wig. But others, it's just a, a, a change of hairstyle. I said, look, I've been having my afro. I need to have a change of look. Then she puts the weave on. But the market is changing towards natural uh, uh, maintaining your hair without using chemicals. And the, the, the journey of being a business person in that industry, how would you describe it? I mean, how has it been for you? I would easily say when I started, it was a wall. It was not even a door. It was a wall. Mm. Then the door that was locked, and we opened the door. Yeah. Because now, you know, when I started, there was no market. Nobody wanted to have it. Even the shops, nobody wanted to keep even the product on the shelves. But today, the market has grown. You know, we were talking earlier on with the brand, my brand manager that uh, the, the hair industry, the natural hair is sitting at 30% of the total ethnic uh, products. So it's growing. It's growing. Yeah, it's yeah. growing every time. Yeah. Now it's, yeah. It doesn't stop. It keeps growing because we keep doubling. And yeah, it's, very, yeah. it's very popular with particularly women entrepreneurs, mm. this, uh, this type of business, yes. right? So as we conclude our interview, so w what advice do you give to people who are entering that type of business? What should they note and At how can they run a successful operation? The pricing first, because most of them, they will contract package, maybe get somebody who's mixing. They must negotiate, be able to negotiate the pricing because you need to be compatible when you take your product out there. And also, access to market, understand how to penetrate the market, your chain stores. Before you go to the chain stores, make sure that the product is known within your environment, where you stay, your township, the churches, youth, uh, uh, you know, all these areas. Make sure that it is known there. And then after that, you go to your pick and pays, you can go. Because if your product is not known, trust me, they would list it and they will delist. And once it's delisted, it's going to be difficult well, to well, list that again. is in the case of the products, exactly. right? But the I'm talking exactly. about the ones who run their own salons. You, you've or the, been the, there, or the, you know. Or the yeah, salons yeah, ones. They're think, moving out, yeah. yeah I, I think those who are in the salons, they must make sure that the customer care is there. You know, make sure that when the client walks in there, please give the best service. Technically, you must be trained. And also, the customer service, clean environment, and also make sure that you remind your customer all the time, you know, like you got a reminder to like the customer remembers that he has to come back for the treatment. Mm. So give that full customer care and make sure that, you know, you look after your staff as well because the staff turnover also will destroy your business. 
Okay, and uh, for those who you know want to get your book and uh, make contact with you, where, where can they find you? Actually, the, the book is available in all the exclusive books. Mm -hmm. And then with me, you can go to info at jobstone.co.za. And how's business now? God willing, all is good. I'm not complaining. It's okay. Good. And the demand increasing? Demand is growing. And, uh, you know, the, the continent as well. We are into the continent as well. Jabustone has been around the block a few times, has seen it all over the past three decades or so. A pleasure to catch up with you. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. That's uh, Jabustone, who currently is manufacturing his own product. That's where he started anyway. And then opened salons along the way to take the product to the people, left it, went back to manufacture, now going back. The book is titled From Passion to Profit. It's at exclusive bookstores. Get in touch with him if you are interested in his uh, product. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you and that's all we had for you this evening. Until next time, good night to you.